Well, hello there. Welcome back to The Well. I'm your host, Beverly Allen. And as we do every week, we gather together to have great conversations with my special guests. And today is no different. Today, my special guest is Reverend Dr. Bernadette Glover, the pastor of St. Paul Baptist Church in Montclair, New Jersey. Reverend Glover, thank you so much for being on The Well with us today. I'm so happy to have you here. I'm delighted to be a part. Thank you for the invitation. Oh, my goodness. You know, um, the viewers got a chance to see your bio, but not fully because we, you know, the time wasn't uh, allotted that it could stay there to read the entire bio. But there's something in your bio that I learned. Your motto is, I'm in the business of putting myself out of business. <laughs> Can you tell me about that? What, what does that mean exactly? Sure. That means that I'm in the business of trying to bring people to Christ, nurture and develop them so that then they can reproduce. They can be productive. And as they are productive and disciple and bring others to Christ, that quote unquote puts me out of business because they're doing what I have done. Uh huh. Yeah, so awesome. that, that's how that came about. That is wonderful. I know that's been your model for a while, too. So. That's right. <laughs> I think that's we right. can learn a little something from that, too. <laughs> uh, but, you know, um, also, uh, you're, you have been in ministry for a number of years. And that includes, uh, the journey kind of includes not only being an executive pastor, being an interim pastor, to being a pastor to being an adjunct professor at several seminaries. You have done so much in ministry. And uh, since the viewers could not read your entire bio, could you just share a little bit of your ministerial journey with us? Mm. <laughs> mm. Okay. Well, let me start by saying, whenever you say yes to God, you don't know where you're going to end up. You just don't know where you're going to end up whenever you say yes to God. And so um, when, when I think about my life, my journey in Christ, since I said yes to the Lord in terms of my salvation, um, it's been just a series of yeses, just a series of yeses, not things I pursued, not things um, in some cases I even knew were available, you know. It's just a series of yeses. So um, in terms of, of, of ministry, um, when I was in college, I was already licensed, you know, to preach. And so I was active on campus. I was, I was, I was, I was doing ministry then, you know, I was yeah. part of a, a nightly devotional group, you know, and shared in leadership with that, um, sharing the word and you know, whatever that was then, um, and going on from there uh, into graduate school, whatever. The first place of service, say in a church setting, was in Bethany in Newark, Bethany yes, Baptist, Baptist Church Baptist in Newark. School. Yeah, uh, and I was director of training then, director of training, and then I went from there to Roseville Presbyterian. I was there for a year as Christian ed person. And um, then I was at the denomination for um, a year as an intern uh, in the area of, a, of social ethical investments, social and ethical investments. Wow. Uh, so I was doing that um, and then Ultimately, for my, the longest amount of time, I was in Perth Amboy. Mm. I was in Perth Amboy. Um, and there I was ordained. You know, I was licensed into ministry at my home church, St. John Baptist Church in Scotch Plains, and ordained at the cathedral. Well, then it was Second Baptist, Bishop mm. Donald Hilliard Jr. Mm. Yeah. And as God would have it, um, I was there serving, you know, for 
20 years in a position for 20 years and then um, taught and um, ultimately came here to um, St. Paul as an interim and then became pastor. Wow, what a journey. And you know, um, we're talking today about the community pastor because I can't even imagine any community, especially communities of color without a church being in the midst. When I think of what it would be like, if, they, if you think it's challenging now and difficult without the church, because everyone usually looks and, and they don't even have to be religious minded. They don't have to, you know, have a conviction, but they look to the church for so many answers, you know. Yeah, yeah. Some of the, many of the ills that are in, you know, our communities. They, they just, that's the go-to place. Uh, one of the number one go-to places for help. And, you know, having said that, I'm thinking about all your years of experience. I would ask you, as I would try to ask many pastors, is what in those experiences helped you during this pandemic, you know, to get through it <laughs> is there any I don't it doesn't even have to be maybe necessarily one thing maybe it was a buildup of things but going coming through this pandemic as facing something we haven't faced basically in our lifetime at that this kind of degree is there you know is there anything or can you or can you be prepared for anything like that <laughs> I think I think fundamentally mm -hmm. fundamentally you got to have an anchor in God. You got to have a, a personal anchor in who God is. is. You know, and I'm talking about uh, beyond just a confession of faith. Um, and, and you just really have to do it. Um, and and have, have work out of a core belief that there's absolutely nothing nothing greater than God, nothing, nothing, you know? And, and when you read, when we read the word to realize that, that the word uh, speaks to every generation, you know? When I think of the Bible, I understand the Bible to be like the diary of God, the diary, the, uh, a diary of the relationship between God and humanity. You know, the, the stress, the stresses, the strains of everyday life, mm -hmm. the times when people are overwhelming, overwhelmed and they call out to God um, when life doesn't make sense. All that is the word, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, so when, and, and so when we approach scripture, uh, often we approach scripture in terms of getting a memory verse. You know, getting a memory verse that can energize me. Yes. But if we would begin to think with the word instead of just quote the word, think with it, it will literally begin to reset your mind, mm. reset your mind, reset your disposition. Oh. And, and you, you start saying, well, why not? Yeah. Why not? Why can't God see us through? You know, um, I, I had this major, can I tell you about a major moment I had? Please. <laughs> I had this major moment, huge moment. It, it really got me. And what got me was, what got me was I decided I wanted to, to do a search of the, the, the Spanish flu, right? The Spanish flu, uh, you know, a hundred years ago, right? So I did that. And I wanted to know specifically about the Spanish flus in New Jersey. That's what I wanted to know, in New Jersey. And so there were old articles that I found, right? Old articles and what happened with Newark and the death toll, right? And so something landed for me. And, and this really, 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 really hit me. What landed for me, it referred to Newark, right? You take Bethany, for example, where I named, where I had been. Bethany Baptist Church existed during the first flu. 
You know what that means? What? Yes. Even St. Paul existed during the first flu. Oh my God. So what that means is that in our people, in our people, this is my immediate frame of reference. Yes. We already have not just the genetic composition, because bear in mind, with the Spanish flu back then, they didn't have a vaccine. No technology, no ability to, to, you know, to tell people far and wide what to be. No, none of that. We not only survive, but we thrive. How did, we weren't even Negroes then, we were colored. <laughs> How did colored people survive? How did colored people survive? The answer, nobody but God. Nobody but God. <laughs> when you said that, what other answer can you give? <laughs> nobody but God. And then, you know, and so this, this whole thing tore me up, you know, and, and just leading up to that, thinking about the, the metaphor I went to, my first metaphor for this pandemic was about being in the ark. You know, mm. and, and how the word says that, that, that they all got on in the ark and then the Lord shuts them in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> when the Lord shuts us in, secures us, we can ride through anything. And the word for ark is also the word that can be translated coffin. So here's this, here's this expression of humanity, the, the expression of animals, all that's needed. They are in, quote unquote, a coffin, awesome. riding out a storm, leaving mm -hmm. a world, the only world they knew they left behind. And then God places them, places them up on a mountain. Mm, 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 mm. That thing got me. That was my oh, the first way, the first way that God gave me to understand the pandemic. Oh, and 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 to show you, He's the same. He changes not, right? <laughs> changes not the same yesterday, today, and forever. Ooh. You, you know. know that is so awesome to make that for you to make that point because you know we read about things in the Bible, but to have this brought back to our remembrance to bring that up about the two churches that you know, oh my! And you said like back then we were colored, we we, we <laughs> colored to the bone. Isn't that something? And it's nobody but God because who else? I mean, the, the things we were struggling with back then. You talk about you know systemic racism. What? what it was causing back then for us and to have been able to make it through my lord well, I, and you know what i tell you then the other piece of that and you know this really pushed me all the way over the edge i mean all the way over the edge it occurred to me how old my grandparents would have been mm -hmm. and i where were my grandparents when the when that flu occurred, where were their parents during that time? My Lord. That pushed me over the edge when I realized my grandparents were alive. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. That is amazing. The Lord had to give that to you as a revelation to 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 think on that thing, you know, to put it in you to think, to just look, to point back and say, I'm, I'm, I did that then. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I did that then. But see, this is the thing. God is a God of generations. Hmm. Right? Abraham, Isaac, Isaac. And Jacob. And, and so what God purposes for one generation it continues. It does. It doesn't die. We may mishandle it, but mm -hmm. that hope. You, 
you know, we, we can look at the Davidic line and realize how many times different ones messed up. But the promise, the, the, the purpose, Still good. Yeah. the seed of God's intention remained intact. Mm -hmm. So, and so for me, you know, the pandemic, you know, it, it really hasn't rattled me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, no, I'm mm -hmm. serious. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. It, it hasn't rattled me. Uh, concern? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course, concern. My God, yes. Have have we seen deaths? Yes, of course we've seen deaths. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've buried people. Yes, I've stood at the gate, uh, you know, the gate of a cemetery because we couldn't get in. I stood at a gate with some family members and watched you know their mother be lowered into because we couldn't get in yes we've done all that but i'm here to tell you the constant of life is god right. and if we could get a hold of that mm -hmm. and the fact that that life is meant to be journeyed in with and through god yes through christ yes it gives us a buoyancy a courage, you know? Yes. Kind and of, that hope, that deep-seated hope. To <laughs> and your hope. Yes, yes. It's like, I don't know how, but I don't have to know how. I'm not in charge of the how. <laughs> I am not in charge of the how. the how. My job is to listen. There you go. It's to hear. <laughs> Right. Here just for us to hear. Isn't yeah. that something? And 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 it's so important too for the laity or the membership to understand that they can hear too. That God wants them to hear, you know, and uh and the, the headship and leadership <laughs> displaying that and modeling that gives them faith and helps their faith, increases their faith too, you know. And uh yeah amazing and, and 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 for you to have navigated you know saint paul <laughs> under the leadership of the lord because there were you know let's face it there were churches that their doors are closed they're mm -hmm. not reopening you know fortunately they're not but to to have that steadfastness you know being unmovable by what's happening around you to continue to march through and to, you know, make it to this day, having therefore obtained help from God. By we, God, yes. We continue <laughs> unto this day. And so you're continuing and that's amazing. And I'm sure there were, there were some challenges. I mean, uh, I don't know whether you were online doing a lot of virtual things before the yeah. pandemic or did, you, or did it become more... Uh, of a reality during the pandemic for your church? <laughs> well, you know, we were always on YouTube, mm -hmm. you know, so we, we were always yes. streaming, streaming. Yes. Yeah, okay. prior to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And when the pandemic occurred, we continued on Saturdays, we would be here, it would be 10 of us. Uh, and I'm telling you, the Lord would meet us, the 10 of us. I three musicians three musicians a sound man someone working the camera and somebody else working the recording for the youtube you know mm -hmm. the core of us yes. praise team and a praise team yes. ten of us we'd be here and i'm telling you the spirit of god would rest so sweetly rest so sweetly week after week we would be here um and 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 people responded you know and with with viewers not only did members of our church view people view from other areas you never know who's viewing yes you know then you get responses from here and there and there uh so we knew the lord was reaching yes yeah, and I've I've heard many people say too is that you know they even grew more <laughs> since being you know virtual you know because some people who may even live out of state <laughs> who viewed the services 
and didn't belong to anybody's church wound up, you know, actually becoming a part of that kind of digital virtual, you know, yes, some church. people have done that. You're absolutely right. So, uh, you know, and that's been a blessing too. You know, there's there's good things that have come out of it, you know, and as, as everything, no matter how bad it is, that God can bring good. He can cause things. He didn't say they would be good, but he can cause things to work together for good, you know, if we, you say as we hear, if we listen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Would you say that... Um, or, or what would you say were some of the things you noticed that may have uh, come that, uh, coming through this? I mean, I know we're not, uh, we're not where we were, <laughs> but we're doing better than where we were. Uh, how things are, anything that you got out of this that would show that uh, things are, you know, different? It's not people talking about, oh, I want to get back to normal. I don't think we're going back to normal. <laughs> it's going to be, it's kind of a new thing. And I don't know if the Lord exactly wants us to go back to everything normal, you know, but to do things in a different way. What would you say that maybe you've noticed about that, that coming out of, or going through this pandemic at this, to this point, um, but you may, did you focus on anything else? Did it redirect anything for you at or the church or how you see, view the church and things that mm -hmm. you might want to do, you know, going forward? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I'd say, first of all, the understanding of what is normal um, is constantly being changed. Constantly. We just don't notice it. You know, before the pandemic, um, for example, 20 years ago, right? 20 years ago, we didn't have this technology, right? 30 years ago. And so what happened is that gradually things began to change, right? Mm -hmm. And what happened? We started coming on board. So the definition of what was normal started changing. It is always changing the understanding of what's normal. We used to, years ago, if I said the word sneaker, we'd have one image. Yes. But the understanding of what a sneaker is has changed gradually over time. So what's normal now for a sneaker is not what it was 20 years ago, but it's changed. You see the point. Mm -hmm. That is to say, really always in flux, always in flux, always adapting and not realizing we are adapting. That, that's, that's one thing. A huge thing, a huge thing is before us as, as the body of Christ. And that is the need for the body of Christ. Everybody in, I'm not saying everybody in church, so let, mm -hmm. me, let me make this distinction. It, there's a difference between being a member with a small M and a member with a capital M. And the irony, this was something that, you know, the Lord started giving me before the pandemic. I started talking mm -hmm. about this. The member with a small M is the person who's part of the church as institution. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the church as organization mm -hmm. the member who has uh, the member with the capital m is the person who understands that he or she is part of the church as organism mm -hmm. body of christ and when we land there we understand that there's an interdependence and interrelated nature between them, all of the parts in the body, mm -hmm. right? Which means if something happens to one part, it's like in the natural, you know how help comes from the rest of the body? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so here's the piece. The challenge for the body of Christ now is for us to understand ourselves to be interchangeable parts. The pandemic has brought up the need for us to be interchangeable. 
in our church life, we are too closely married to being our part, to our part that we play. This is my role. Mm -hmm. As a result, we get turf wars, we get silos, you know, we get, I've never done it this way. We get, mm. we get, no, and, and we have all these defense things. Oh, the Lord chose me for this. Yeah, but, you know, go sit down. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it's now time for, praise the Lord. We love you with the love of the Lord. Go sit down. <laughs> understand what I'm saying. Yes. But in this pandemic, mm -hmm. it necessitated that people move from what they were accustomed to, areas they were serving. Mm -hmm. They could serve there too, but they were called upon to serve in some other the area. Bird. They had to be an interchangeable part mm -hmm. because of the need, need. of mm -hmm. power. But when we become interchangeable parts, God gives us the grace to serve there. And we also get to learn and identify with the people who were there. Mm. That makes sense. Yes, it does. Let totally. me give you an example. You don't mind. And I'm no. sorry. I'm no, you. not give at all. Example. So, so the chair of our trustees, great brother, great brother. He was a chair. He would do what chairs of trustees do. Praise the Lord. But during this pandemic, um, you know, we had a deep cleaning here at the church and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. He's part of the cleaning team after Sunday morning service. Mm -hmm. So he has his Sunday when you can find him cleaning in the sanctuary. That had never been his part. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. You don't hear me. Ooh, that was not his part. But I see that brother. Mm, mm, this mm. brother knows Jesus. This brother has a financial. You know, he's quote unquote the 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 the, the kind of person you would imagine would be the chair of the trustees, right? Yes, yes. That's <laughs> him. Mm -hmm. Great guy. Mm -hmm. Those were the. But now mm, 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 he's got the gloves on. A different role to play, Lord have mercy. He's in an inter now. So here, here's how huge this is. <coughs> here's this. God sent his son to be among us as an interchangeable part. God with skin on. Mm -hmm. How can I say Jesus was in, and I'm not taking any way from his divinity. I don't mean it that way. No, it is. Right? Right. Bible says, we have not a high priest. Who cannot be, all right. Cannot, that's Hebrew. Yes. Who <laughs> cannot be touched mm -hmm. by the feelings mm -hmm. of our infirmities. Why? Because he became hey. <laughs> and entered, he took the part. Mm -hmm. He has been here. here. My God. God. And man, God mm -hmm. and human at the mm -hmm. same time, time. interchangeable. <laughs> and so we, as the body of Christ, are to represent Christ, the kingdom. Mm, 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 and mm. this is what this hour summons us to. It's a huge lesson for the pandemic. It is. We, we were all we were all too myopic. Mm. My church, my corner. You know what? That's not God. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This mm -mm. is kingdom. Yes. This is church universal. Mm. You have your expression. I have mm. my expression. You know, we have our denominations, praise mm. and all of us. Mm -hmm. I'm not knocking anything. But beyond mm. that, we are called to be the God. Yes, we are. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My Lord. 
My Lord, you you just said so much that was so powerful. My goodness. If there needs, like you said, to be a reassessment where you look at yourself, each individual <laughs> through this pandemic and say, be interchangeable, to be That's flexible, right. to be flexible. If they need you here, it doesn't matter whether you're whether you say like you're the trustee or you have to do a janitorial service, it's all kingdom work. Serve the also Lord with gladness. gladness. There you go. There you go. Any way you're needed. Mm -hmm. It's not the work. It's mm -hmm. the one you're serving. It's not the work. And when you and when you look at him, you don't care what the work is. <laughs> you really don't care. Whatever you need me to do, Lord. You know, there's nothing too big or too small. Right. It doesn't matter because you recognize who you're doing it for. And as you said, that's what makes the difference. That's what makes the difference. And I think a lot, a lot of churches or, or leadership in churches are, are recognizing that need because many of the membership have been, they haven't been shaken up, <laughs> you know. Uh, to to really realize that and and maybe even unbeknownst to them to come in and feel like okay this is church I'm in the church but not necessarily in the body like you said the organization as opposed to the organism so that well, is something you know you okay so so let's you know keeping it real keeping mm -hmm. it real mm -hmm. right yes cross the board I don't mean no harm as my mm -hmm. office say I don't mean no harm but in the majority of our churches, there's a small percentage of people who know Christ and have been discipled. That's true. That's I, I don't know harm. That's fact. I don't care what whose church it is. That's I'm not saying ministry doesn't happen there. That's not what I'm saying. That's fact. We have people who, you know, they will pray the sinner's mm -hmm. prayer or tarry or whatever, right? But they have no root. No, no root. No root. Follow the regimen, <laughs> but without the spiritual, you know, connection. Exactly. Yeah, that's so true. That's fact. They've done surveys and things on that. We know that to be true. Yeah. And 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 so that means that there has to be a change. And uh, seeing that even more so now and, and, and looking at the time frame that we're in under, I don't there's no time to waste. <laughs> oh yeah. There's no time to waste. There's, no time there's to waste. a difference between a seeker, a believer, a follower, and a disciple. Oh. That is so true. Many of us have been saved for a long time before we ever become a disciple. And 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 that is the job of the community of the church in the community, <laughs> right? Oh my goodness. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That is a that's the call. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that hasn't changed. That's what we are to do. But I guess maybe now. You know, as you said, like going through the pandemic and looking at this <laughs> and in hindsight saying, you know, wow, we really got to amp up and step up to make sure that we are actually configured in a sense to help people have that experience and understand that, to really understand like the word, you know, uh, in them, uh, transforming them to that state. <laughs> Right, right, right. Yeah, and not just coming in, taking a seat here, you know, in the building, but not having a seat, you know, oh, in a relationship. There you go. So, the, the, yeah, I think going forward, that's something that many people I, I have, have come to kind of realize, the leadership, that there's a direction that they're going to have to uh, take. And so I think as the, as the question was even, there's the answer right there, coming through this pandemic, that is a realization for, I think, many uh, of the leadership will have to, you know, really assess and make sure, because who's going to be held accountable but, <laughs> but, but, the, but the leaders, you know, 
to. So um, that is that's number one. That's so important. And you know, you've done so many. You've done some things uh, as far as reaching out to the community to help the community. You've done. I mean, in the past, and you, you're, you're an activist. I mean, for social justice, and and uh, I'm sure as many people have re recognized now in this pandemic that. We were kind of last on, usually last on the totem pole when it comes to healthcare, <laughs> but this pandemic uh, now uh, has kind of pushed the need for us to be at the front of the line, you know, uh, with the vaccinations, with testing, and with things like that. And you were instrumental in your community by having uh, or partnering with the Essex County. Um, group to have a pop-up vaccination site at your church uh hosting that was that hard to accomplish to get to have that to get that site at your church and i ask that because some pastors have said how difficult it was in the beginning to try to get uh the government or things that were needed to have at you know, at your church so that you could offer that in your community. Was that difficult for you or was it by that time they were more open to churches being used to facilitate, you know, mm. vaccinations? Mm. Mm. God was gracious and kind. That's number one. God was gracious and kind. And um, what we did, we reached out. We reached out to our freeholders we wrote our freeholder a letter and said to him, um, you know, the vaccination is needed in our community and it's needed for these reasons. You know, number one, the majority of people here, the demographic here, it's not easy for this demographic to travel to these super sites. Mm. That's number one. But then we said, you know, the demographic here uh, largely falls into that group that are considered the more vulnerable mm -hmm. population, blah, 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 blah. And so, you know, we, we expressed to the freeholder that, um, you know, having something in this community would be really needed. Plus, the, the, the age was another thing we put out there, too. Um, we put the age out there. And so, you know, we suggested a local site, something like this particular site, which was larger. Yes. We said, um, aside from that, consider St. Paul. And we said, what we don't have in square footage, we do have by being in and of the community. And then, you know, we, we concluded by saying Rosedale is too close to us. Well, Rosedale is the cemetery. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Rosedale is just down the street, about a mile, not even quite a mile from where we are. Yes. And so, you know, God was gracious and kind and the freeholder responded. Mm. The freeholder responded, said yes. And that opened the door. And the next thing we knew, the wheels got going, and then we had it here. Wow. We had it here. Oh, my Lord, I'm telling you, mm -hmm. what, what a tremendous day. And, you know, for me, half, and I say fun, half the fun for me was interceding. Just because my mouth isn't open doesn't mean I'm not praying, <laughs> you know, and, and so uh, as people registered and stuff like that, you know, mm -hmm. we had people in the office, was a hands down, you know, all involved effort, you know, we'd see their names, blah, 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 and uh, the day of it, and here was a powerful thing, the day, the day they gave it, the day uh, for the vaccination was the day after Resurrection Sunday. You couldn't even plan that. Isn't that something? His stripes we are healed. And up from the grave he arose, you know, with 
suffer, bled, and die with healing for our healing, not only forgiveness of our sins. Oh my. Day after Resurrection Sunday was when the county scheduled it to be right here at St. Paul. Mm, 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 no way. Mm, mm. We couldn't have orchestrated that. Oh, you couldn't. <laughs> Nobody can write a script for a movie like that. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. And so we had the opportunity to welcome, you know, to really welcome the, the, the county staff, and they were phenomenal. To welcome them, come in, we welcome the community, you know, and the people that responded. Oh my. Wow. That's what I was going to ask you. What was their response? Oh, my God. People came, and uh, some of the, some some things really got me. For example, there was a uh, a woman who came. She and her husband, and they had uh, their children, and the one child was autistic. And so, there were vaccinations in the car. You, you know, you didn't, and so that way. The child could remain in the car and not have to be, you know, overstimulated. Yes, yes, yes. You see how God did that? If wow, this is a child. This is a young person, autistic. Then mm. we had a woman, ninety-nine years old. They brought her. Yeah. Her family had her in a car. Mm -hmm. so people were here by car who could not get out of their vehicles. And other people came in. Mm -hmm. You know, some people saw the sign and wondered what was going on, and they just walked in. Mm -hmm. Students came, people. <clears throat> and you know what? I want another one. <laughs> want another one the door is open wow isn't that something yeah while mm. I was here you know i got to i walked around praise the lord and spoke to people hi how you doing i'm pastor here you all right what's going on you know yes and, yeah and for all the workers here you know we had the continental breakfast for them you know and we just want to try to minister and be be for people, you know? Yes, yes. Isn't that awesome? Oh my goodness. Do undercover prayer. Yes. Do undercover it, prayer. Did you see that? Don't tell me prayer changes. I know prayer changes things. <laughs> I loved it. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, so we, we want to be here. We want our doors to be open. And in fact, you know how in Colossians, where Paul says, you know, pray for me that there might be an open, open door, door. Yes. Yeah. So can proclaim this mm. mystery. Mm. That was the verse of scripture that the Lord gave. And that's what brought us back in here mm. in September. We came back. That was the scripture. Wow. Pray for an open door. Mm. 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 That is amazing. You know, uh, have in talking about that, I want to take just a break to show the viewers uh, just a few highlights of things that you were doing, how you kept the church spiritually motivated, as well as, you know, physically motivated, you know, through virtual means and things. I'm just going to take a break and let them see, uh, you know, just this little short presentation um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so they can see what uh, St. Paul was doing through the pandemic and continues to do. So just take a break. We'll, don't go away, viewers. We'll be right back. We just want you to see this presentation. Be right back.
we're back. And I know you enjoyed that wonderful representation of St. Paul, uh, their activities throughout this pandemic. And we are going to put up all the information that you can contact them as well as contacting uh, Reverend Glover to find out any information you need or you may want to share, you know, as she continues to direct and navigate St. Paul through this pandemic and through the community at large for the sake of Christ, for proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. And um, so, uh, Reverend Glover, I, I want to ask you too, is that there were, uh, there's a lot of pastors, uh, I'm sure, um, outside of even your zip code and uh even throughout the state that are your male counterparts, I guess I could say, you know, uh, your yeah. colleagues, male colleagues, were there yeah. any challenges that you may have spoken to them in um, just communication that you had and that they had that were different, were different from each other because of, you know, they, they being males and you being an actual, a, a woman pastor, was it? It, or, or is it just, I don't know, I just, or is it just like a pastor's a pastor you can have some things. I've just seen that. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen some situ most uh, situations that there are usually a lot of challenges that, you know, that the woman pastor has to deal with that they don't necessarily, you know, uh, encounter. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let me start by saying, um, I have all brothers. <laughs> it's in terms of my family. I got all brothers and I'm the youngest. All Are you brothers. the only girl? You're the only girl. <laughs> and all my first cousins are men. Both sides of my family. First cousins, men. I'm the only girl. Wow. <laughs> the, the best part of that, you know, is that the men in my family, they have these different personalities. And so I have been exposed mm -hmm. to different personalities, <laughs> you know, just really. Yes. And um, I enjoy the men in my family. And at times, you know, I could wring their neck, they could wring mine. This is the way it goes. But this is my family, you know? So that, that's my starting point. Um, there are ministers in my family, you know, my father was a pastor, my grandfather was a pastor, my uncle was a pastor, my father's first cousin was a pastor, my first cousin is a pastor, this kind of a thing. They're wow. men. So, um, so I'm acquainted also with, with men, uh, not just because they're men, but also if I want to talk about ministry with men or mm -hmm. from a male perspective i can dialogue you know with my brother who's a pastor in ohio or wow. my cousin who's a pastor in florida in fact my cousin and i were just my brother called me yesterday and my first cousin we were talking father's day and so we can have that kind of thing yes um i've had some brothers in ministry some pastors and we have been friends for decades and we challenge each other. We listen to each other. Um, our perspectives on things are often different, mm -hmm. which is great. Yes. Really great because we can, I have found that we can complement each other. Mm. Complement each other, you know? Yes. Um, yeah. So I, I do think that uh, you know, for for the church, obviously, for the black church in particular, the black church is um, we we really prefer men in leadership more than women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, just honestly, so yes, mm -hmm. honestly, so we might acknowledge, yes, you know, this woman is called of God, blah 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 blah. blah. Mm -hmm. But I like mm -hmm. a man in the that's what some will tell mm, you. Yes, I've heard that. <laughs> okay, whatever, fine. Um, whatever. Um, and so, you know, there is, 
sexism. There's sexism in the sexism in the church period. And there's sexism in the black church, you know, um, and a lot of things that have been with us for many years, for many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll, I'll make a general statement. Uh, I, so let me let me say that I think probably every every church mm -hmm. every church has to first of all start thinking like out of that capital M mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because if you start thinking out of that capital M mindset, mm. this is the Lord's church. Yes. Then seeking God for who does what mm -hmm. serves where, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. um, it can really change everything. Mm, yes. It can change everything. Um, yeah. It can change everything, including our attitudes. And a question for us to ask ourselves is, you know, why do I prefer men's leadership over women's? Or why would I let a man get away with this? But if a woman did, a woman can't come in, but a man we will tolerate. Mm. Etc. Those mm -hmm. are things that we must reconcile mm. with as a community. Mm really reconcile with um because that's about something else else yeah mm -hmm. that's about some other things mm -hmm. um, so yeah but men and women uh, i think our starting points are frequently different yes frequently yeah. very different mm -hmm. the way we also perceive uh power influence authority our starting points can be different mm. on that too Definitely. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you, having said that, <laughs> that is this. We could take up the whole show just talking about that. But I'm yeah, glad that, that, that's a whole show. That's by a whole itself. show by that's itself. A whole show. <laughs> but I appreciate what what you have said about it because I know that there are. Um, different things and i don't know whether uh those challenges or those differences um haven't really affected you in a sense as we see just by outside being outside of looking in of the things that you know uh, saint paul has accomplished under your leadership things that you have done i mean even you know the people that are leading or that are still better there uh the male population that is there <laughs> you know um that and that you're still there and that you know you're, you're going strong so thank god for that so uh the, that shows that there are some people who are actually who are on board and in fact you were chosen <laughs> it wasn't like you know it wasn't a lottery ticket you were chosen people had to say yeah, oh yeah yeah right you no know? <laughs> so so thank god for that and um i think that just speaks volumes <laughs> in itself so I, I thank god for that and for sharing some of the differences and how you reconcile, how you deal with it. <laughs> and um, it seems like, you know, boy, time flies when you're, you're really enjoying yourself. But, you know, I want to ask you, before we close out, um, if there is anything you would like to say to any pastor at this time, any uh, source of encouragement or words that you would share, if you would share that, and then if you would close us out with prayer. Mm yes 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 thank you for that thank you for that thank so you. so i would say to to pastors who are who are who are seeing this i would say it's good for all of us to go to god at any time especially now mm. and ask god what is the status of our purpose the status of our purpose, the status of our assignment, because it's out of our purpose that our assignment comes. Mm. We really don't get to determine our assignment. We have the privilege to yield to the assignment and the privilege to yield to God's purpose. So I would say, ask God, what's the status of it? And that will strengthen and encourage your heart. 
Mm. Just knowing what the status of it is. Mm. Uh, the last verse in the gospel, according to Luke chapter two, says that Jesus grew in wisdom, mm. stature and favor with God and humanity. Wow. Mm -hmm. Locking into that one verse can speak strength to your soul. Mm. Locking into that strength. Locking into that one verse can speak strength to your soul. And then remembering that the psalmist says that God watches over his word to perform it. Wow. So when we lock into that purpose, the status, lock into the status of our appointment, our assignment. Know that God is watching over the purpose, watching over the word to accomplish it. So it's not for us to accomplish it in our own strength, mm. but God's strength functioning through us. Mm. Steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. Mm -hmm. the work of the Lord for your labor is not in vain in the Lord mm -hmm. wow oh, thank you thank you sir. hallelujah thank you Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you. In your name God God thank you for this time that we have shared yes Lord thank you I pray God for all of us today Jesus that even as your servant, the prophet, prayed. Yes. Elisha. Elisha prayed and asked that the eyes of his servant would be opened so that he could see the host, the host of support mm. that was around. God, while it's so easy for us to feel surrounded, engulfed by what we don't know, by what we can't access, by things that we've never seen. Lord, open our eyes yes. in the name of Jesus, yes. that we might recognize that you are at work, mm. that angels are on post, that this is not our work, but it's your work. We are, we are not called to function out of our own strength, out of our own ingenuity, out of our own knowledge, our own wisdom, but we are called to yield to you and you will do what you will do through us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name, Jesus. May your word come alive within yes, us. Yes, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Establish your kingdom through us. Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, I pray that you will raise Jesus. up prayer warriors for yes. the church, prayer warriors yes. for pastors, prayer yes. warriors for the lost, yes. prayer yes. warriors for politicians. Jesus. Who want to silence the prophetic voice of the Jesus. church. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Desire for clergy to be puppets. Of political Jesus. points of view. Jesus. May we recognize Jesus. You are the commander and chief. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Of all heaven and earth. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the government rests Thank upon you. your shoulders. You are yes, Lord, and Omega, the first and Thank the you. last, the mm. ancient of days, Jesus. the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. To shed for the sins of all humanity. Now, God, for those who are on today, and they, need, they need your Jesus. hand. Yes, Lord. Your hand of healing. Jesus. Release healing to them. Lord, in your name, Jesus. Healing Amen. to their minds. Yes, God. Arrest anxieties trying to run them out. God, God, arrest them anxieties in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And so those who are drifting, bring them back in. Yes, Lord, in Jesus. Bring them back in. Please, Lord. Lord, save mm. the church Jesus. that we might be useful to you. Yes, Lord. In, power. in the name of Jesus. We will not exist in name. Jesus. But that we will be present in your heart. 
Yes, Lord. In the stewards of your grace, your gospel, your mercy. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Now, Amen. for Jesus. this great host. Yes, Lord. Jesus. You have called to this work. Jesus. Continue to infuse her. Jesus. Your anointing, your direction. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Through this medium, your voice has been heard. Jesus. Crown her head. Thank you. With every spiritual grace and benediction. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Thank you so much. What a blessing this day is. My Lord, my Lord. I know, viewers, that you are inspired and you are blessed and that God said his word would not go out and return into him void. It will accomplish what it's set to do. I believe it had this program had a, an assignment today and that someone needed to hear your voice, Dr. Glover, somebody needed to hear you not just pray, but to talk about the journey and, 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 and just opening up. When you opened up with what the Lord revealed to you, how you did that research, my God, on those two churches, it's just like to look back. You know, if you want to know what God can do and where he can take you, just look back and see what he already has done. That, that was so powerful to begin with and then to close out with this prayer. I thank you so much. Being here today was such a tremendous blessing. Mm -hmm. I thank you and I pray God speed in your life and that God thank will you. just continue to guide and direct you as you seek him because you're seeking him, you know, for his, what his will is to do in these days because we need to, we need to, we need our leaders to, you know, to, to, to follow them to, as they follow Christ to show yes. us that is awesome. And so I pray that this is, this is your first time, but it won't be your last time. <laughs> and I pray, I look forward to reaching out to the, in the future to you, to have your voice heard and to speak, you know, in words of encouragement to us. And I, to the viewers, thank you for being here. I look for you to be at the well again every week that we might have a great conversation that you might not only be informed but uplifted but built up in the most holy faith that yeah. this has been so encouraging and i look for you next week until then be well be blessed and stay safe and again dr uh, glover thank you so much and i say to the people my joy god, thank you so much god bless you and we'll see you next time at the well bye, -bye.